Pretty soon we're going to start evaluating indefinite integrals, but I want to lay down some groundwork first. Let's recall that the expression, the integral of f of x dx, is called an indefinite integral, and that what it rep represents are the antiderivatives of this function, little f of x. And here's the relationship between a, a function and its antiderivatives. The derivative of capital F of x equals little f means that the integral of little f of x equals capital F of x plus c. So if you find one antiderivative, and that's a function whose derivative is the given function, then you can add a plus c, and that's all the antiderivatives of your given function. So we're going to be solving problems like this in the next uh, few lessons. Let's look at an example, though. I mean, you could just use what you know about derivatives to create integral formulas. For example, the derivative of 5x squared minus 4x equals 10x minus 4. So you can turn that around. The integral of 10x minus 4 is 5x squared minus 4x plus c. Just add a plus c to your original function, and that gives you all the antiderivatives of 10x minus 4. Um, a useful integral formula, we'll be using this a lot. This is how to integrate a power function, x to the n. Uh, the antiderivatives will be 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1 plus c. And this formula only works if n isn't negative 1. We need another formula if n is negative 1. And there are two properties that we'll use a lot. First, the constant multiple rule. If you're integrating a function that has a constant in front of it, you can pull that constant out of the integral. So that's going to be very useful. And the other one is the sum rule. The integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals. So if you have a sum or difference, uh, you can actually separate the integral over the sum, which is also very useful. So we'll use these two properties and this formula in upcoming lessons.